praise. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Be thou exalted, O God. Be thou magnified. Be thou lifted up. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for being our rock. Thank you for being our defender. Thank you for being our hiding place. Thank you for you are our sustainer, our deliverer, our way maker, our master, our protector, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, let your name be glorified as we come before your presence. Let your name be exalted as we come before your throne, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being our rock. Thank you for being our fortress. Thank you for being our hiding place, our shield, God, and the lift of our heads. We praise your name, ancient of days, because you're great and greatly to be praised. We praise your name, I am that I am, because you are all sufficient. You are God that never sleeps nor slumber in the name of Jesus. Father, accept our prayers now as we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we come before you. We say thank you, O God, for fighting our battles. We say thank you, God, for lifting us up when we fall. We say thank you, God, for you are at our right hand and we shall not be moved. In the mighty name of Jesus. Most high God, we come before your throne and we say thank you. I am that I am. We come before your presence and we say be thou magnified in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being our sustainer, Lord. Thank you for being our redeemer, Lord. Thank you for being our hope. Thank you for you are the king of glory in the name of Jesus. Father, magnify yourself in our midst, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Magnify yourself in our lives in this new year in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you today, oh God. For you do not need to be counseled because you are God. You know all things. You are all powerful. You are faithful. You are just Lord. In the name of Jesus, we magnify your name because you are worthy. We magnify your name because you are, you are the ancient of days. In the name of Jesus, Father, we praise your name and we say thank you. By the power in the blood of Jesus, we say thank you, oh God. For you are faithful and you are just. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your glory name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Let your name be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for you are faithful, O God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for you are just. Thank you for you are our deliverer. The ancient of days. Great and mighty God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, receive our prayers in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, receive our worship as we come before your throne in the name of Jesus. Our Lord, my God, my master, my defender, we praise your name. For you are great God and greatly to be praised. We praise your name because you are just, you are holy. You are our deliverer. You are the mighty man in battle. Lord, we give you all the glory, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, receive our praise in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, receive our worship as we come before your presence. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we honor you, God, because you are faithful. We honor you, oh God, because you are just God. We honor you, God, because you are our redeemer. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we praise your name because you are faithful. You are just, you are holy. God, we thank you, oh God, for you do not need instruction. Lord, you have shown us in the past that you don't need our instructions. And you have proven even today that you don't need instruction. And so, Lord, we thank you because you know everything. And Lord, what you say is perfect. What you do is perfect. What decision you take is perfect. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you all the praise, almighty Father. And we thank you, oh God, because you do not need no instruction at all, not even in knowledge and understanding, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, let your name be praised. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be magnified, Lord, as we come before your presence. Father, receive our prayers in the name of Jesus. Receive our worship as we come before your presence. Mighty God, we thank you. 
For you deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. We worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. So God bless you, everyone, and welcome to this evening prior program that we're having. We're streaming both um, live on here on YouTube and also on TikTok. And um, we're dealing with today when your marriage needs deliverance. So that is what we're dealing with. And as we promised that um, for the se first seven days in January, so starting from the 1st of January to the 7th of January, we're meeting twice a day and um, we're going to pray ocean dividing prayers. And so when we're going to pray ocean dividing prayers, we're asking the Lord to make a way for us where there seems to be no way. We're asking the Lord to make impossible situation possible. And we're asking the Lord to part the Red Sea for us. So that's really what we're doing um, in these seven days that we're having. So some of the programs, they will be on YouTube and also on Zoom. And in order to not miss out on any of the YouTube programs, please make sure to like the video, share it with your friends, your family and loved ones, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Also hit the notification bell, which is key, so that whenever we go live, you'll be able to see us and join us as we pray. All right. So with that said, um, for those that are joining us for the first time, we want to welcome you. And we want you to know that every time we meet, we read the Bible. So right now we are in the book of um, Numbers. We're at Numbers chapter 18. I'm using the names of God Bible version. So we're going to look at Numbers chapter 18 and Numbers chapter 19 today. We're going to read those as our scripture reading. And then we're going to get into our topic, when your marriage needs deliverance. And then also we're going to do some serious praying. Amen. All right. So please just take the opportunity, send it to whoever you know that may need these prayers. It doesn't matter if their marriage is good or their marriage is um, not good, or if they're not married, just send it to them because the information could be helpful to them. All right. So let's quickly just get into business. Let's jump over to Numbers chapter 18. Numbers chapter 18. Um, use whatever version of the Bible you have access to, but for here, we're using names of God Bible version. Let's do it. Yahweh said to Aaron, you, your sons, and your family will be responsible for any sins against the holy place. You and your sons will also be responsible for any sins you commit when you work as priests. Bring the other Levites from your ancestors tribe to join you and help you. And you, your sons, serve in front of the tent of the words of my promise. They will work for you doing whatever work is necessary for the whole tent, but they must not come near the altar or the furnishings in the holy place, or they will die and you will die too. They will join you and do whatever work is necessary for the tent of meeting, including the maintenance work for the tent. But no one else may come near you. You must be in charge of the work done at the holy place and at the altar then I won't show my anger against the Israelites again. I have chosen the other Levites from among the Israelites to help you. They are a gift given to Yahweh to do whatever work is necessary at the tent of meeting. Only you and your sons may do the work of priests everywhere, everything done at the altar and under the canopy. This is my gift to you. You may serve me as priests. Anyone else who comes near the holy place to do this work must die. Yahweh said to Aaron, I am putting you in charge of all the contributions given to me. I am giving you and your descendants all the holy gifts from the Israelites as you share. These contribution will always be yours. That's part of, most, part of the most holy offering which is not burned belongs to you. It may come from a grain offering, an offering for sin or a guilt offering, whatever is brought to me as a most holy offering will belong to you and yours. Eat it in a, in a most holy place. Any male may eat it. You must consider it holy. The contributions that come as gift taken from the offerings presented by the Israelites are also yours. I am giving these to you, your sons and your daughters. They will always be yours. Anyone in your household who is clean may eat them. I am also giving you the first of the produce they give Yahweh, the best of all the olive oil and the best of the new wine and fresh grain. The first of all produce harvested in their land, 
that they bring to Yahweh is yours. Anyone in your household who is clean may eat it. Anything in Israel that is claimed by the Lord is yours. Every firstborn male, human or animal that is brought to Yahweh is yours. But you must buy back every firstborn son and the firstborn male of any unclean animal. When they are one month old, you must buy them back at a fixed price of two ounces of silver using the standard weight of the holy place. But you must never buy back a firstborn ox, sheep, or goat. They are holy. Throw the blood from these animals against the altar and burn the fat as an offering by fire, a suiting aroma to Yahweh. But the meat is yours, like the breast and the right thigh that are presented. I'm giving you, your sons and your daughters, all the holy contributions the Israelites bring to Yahweh. This contribution will always be yours. It is an everlasting promise of salt in Yahweh's presence for you and your descendants. Yahweh said to Aaron, you will have no land or property of your own as the other Israelites will have. I am your possession and your property among the Israelites. I am giving the Levites one-tenth of every Israelite income. This is in return for the work for the work they do at the tent of meeting. The other Israelites must never again come near the tent of meeting. Otherwise, they suffer the consequences of their sin and die. Only the Levites will do the work at the tent of meeting. They will be responsible for their own sins. This is a permanent law for future generations. They will, they will own no property at the other, as, as the other Israelites will. Instead, I will give the Levites what the Israelites contribute to Yahweh, one-tenth of the Israelites' income. This is why I said about them, they will own no property as the other Israelites do. Yahweh said to Moses, speak to the Levites and say to them, you will take one-tenth of the Israelites' income, which I'm giving you as your property. When you do, you must contribute one-tenth of that income as your contribution to Yahweh. Your contribution will be considered to be grain from the threshing floor or juice from the wine press. So you too will contribute one-tenth of your income to Yahweh out of all that you receive from the Israelites' income. You will give Yahweh's contribution to the priest Aaron out of all the gifts you receive. You must contribute the best and holiest parts to Yahweh. Also tell them, when you contribute the best part, your contribution will be considered to be produced from the threshing floor or wine press. So you and your household may eat it anywhere because it's the wages you receive for your work at the tent of meeting. When you contribute the best part, you won't suffer the consequences of any sin. You won't be dishonoring the holy offerings given by the Israelites and you won't die. Amen. So that's the word of God right there. Let's turn over to Numbers chapter 19. Numbers chapter 19. We're going to quickly read this one. Numbers chapter 19. Let's do it. Numbers chapter 19. Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, this is what Yahweh's teachings have commanded. Tell the Israelites to bring you a red cow that is perfect with no defects. Also, it must never have worn a yoke. Give it to the priest, Eleazar. It must be taken outside the camp and slaughtered in his presence. The priest, Eleazar, will take some of the blood with his finger and sprinkle it seven times toward the front of the tent of meeting. Then the entire cow, the skin, meat, blood, and excrement will be burned while he watches. The priest will take some cedar wood, a hyssop sprig, and some red yarn and throw them onto the burning cow. The priest must then wash his clothes and his body. After that, he may go into the camp. He will be unclean until evening. The person who burned a calf must also wash his clothes and his body. He too will be unclean until evening. Man who is clean will collect the ashes from the cow and put them in a clean place outside the camp. They will be kept by the community of Israel and used in the water that takes away uncleanness. The cow is an offering for sin. The person who collected the ashes from the cow must also wash his clothes. He will be unclean until evening. 
This will be a permanent law for the Israelites and for the foreigners who live with them. Whoever touches the dead body of any human being will be unclean for seven days. The unclean person must use this water on the third day and the seventh day to take away his sin. And he will be clean. But if he doesn't use this water on the third day and the seventh day, he will not be clean. Whoever touches the dead body of a human being and doesn't use this water to take away his sin makes Yahweh tent unclean. That person must be excluded from Israel because the water also that takes away uncleanness wasn't sprinkled on him. He's unclean. His uncleanness stays with him. These are their instructions for when a person dies in a tent. Everyone who goes into the tent and everyone who is in the tent will be unclean for seven days. Every container without a lid fastened on it is unclean. Whoever is outdoors and touches someone who was killed or has died naturally or anyone who touches a human bone or a grave will be unclean for seven days. This is what you must do for the people who become unclean from touching a dead body. Put some of the ashes from the red cow that has burned as an offering for sin in a container, then pour fresh water on them. A person who is clean will take a sprig of hyssop, dip it in the water, and sprinkle the tent, all the furnishings, and all the people who are in the tent with the dead body. He must sprinkle any person who has touched a human bone or a grave, and any person who has touched someone who has been killed or has died naturally. A person who is clean will sprinkle these types of unclean people on the third day and the seventh day. On the seventh day, the clean person will finish taking away their sins. They must wash their clothes and bodies, and in the evening, they will be clean. But if the person becomes unclean, doesn't have his sin taken away, that person must be excluded from the assembly. He has made the holy place of Yahweh unclean. The water to take away uncleanness wasn't sprinkled on him. He is unclean. This will be a permanent law for them. Whoever sprinkles the water to take away uncleanness must wash his clothes. And whoever touches this water will be unclean until evening. Anything that an unclean person touches become unclean. And the person who touches it will be unclean until evening. Amen. So that's the word of God right there. So before we get into all of this stuff about when your marriage needs deliverance, let's take the opportunity right now and let's just begin to ask the law for mercy. If there's anything that you have done to cause your marriage to be in a situation where it needs deliverance, this is the opportunity to go before the Lord and ask him for mercy. Why don't you talk to the Lord right now and ask him for mercy? Ask the law for mercy right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we praise your name. We ask you for mercy, Lord. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted. Precious God, our redeeming King, we come before you. Lord, my God, anything in our life, Lord, that will hinder the word, that will hinder our prayers today, Father, we surrender and we ask you for mercy. Lord, my God, let your mercy prevail in every area of our lives. Father, you deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord, we come to you in absolute surrender. Have mercy, O oh God. Wash us and make us clean. Take all the glory, God, as we look to you, God, in prayers and through your word. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen, amen, and amen. All right, so God bless you again. And right now we're looking at when your marriage needs deliverance. All right? So the topic as we're talking about when your marriage needs deliverance is very important for all married people. And those who want to get married is very, very important. Okay? So as we know, God completed everything he needed to do in the Garden of Eden. What he did, he passed it through his spiritual, you know, basically a laboratory and declared the whole thing good. So God declared everything good. But all of a sudden, in Genesis 2 verse 18, we came across something that was not good. All right? So grab your Bible. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. It says, And the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. All right? So from that scripture, that was the beginning of marriage. All right? And so there is no history book 
that goes further than that, you know, that verse. And so if you look at this verse 24 also of that same Genesis, what does it say? Let's turn down to Genesis 2.24. It says, therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. That's what the Bible says. So the Bible says that the man shall leave his parents, but if he is still, you know, clinging to the things of the parents, then you definitely know that deliverance is needed. When the Bible command a man to leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the man decide that, no, no, I'm clinging to my parents, they're in sin, they're in error, because you're supposed to leave your father and mother and cleave to your wife. All right? So um, it is possible as we can see from even the scripture and just even from what's happening in the world, that it is possible for a man to be married without leaving their parents. All right. Some of them has physically leave the parents, but emotionally in every other capacity, they haven't left. And some of them haven't even left their parents physically and all other ways. All right. So the Bible says that the man shall leave and he shall cleave to his wife. And so wife is singular. Meaning that one, it didn't mean two. It didn't say wives. Um, and it also says that a man, not a boy, they shall be one flesh. So if you ask me, that's the foundation of marriage. All right? And I don't know if you all agree, but that's really the foundation of marriage. So when we talk about the family, so the family is the foundation of civilization, as we know. And so it is a church within a church. The family is a church within a church. It is a world within a world, and it is the building block of the society, okay? So the family is the root of both the church and also the states. And also, so when you look at the family, the family is really like a book, you know? And when you look at the elements within the family, you know, when you have a family, a man and a woman first come together, what comes after the children, all right? So the children are the pages, and guess who made the cover of that book? You, the parents, because you literally start that marriage together. All right, so the parents are the cover. The children, the, the family is like a book. The children are the pages, and you, the parents, the male and the female, mother, father, you are the cover. All right, so nobody has a choice how, you know, he or she is to be born or given birth to. And, and the reason why is because you, can't, you just can't choose. You can't choose your parents. You can't choose how you're going to be born or, or giving birth to. It's, it's just what it is. It's only God decide that. So the concept of family, as we know, and as we said, it originated from God. And it is the school of human virtues. So if things go right in the family, um, if marriages go right, everything will go right everywhere. And we can see even from society, most of the times when you see people have a problematic life, you know, children turn, they become delinquents and stuff. Half of the time, or even more than half of the time, they're from broken homes. So if everything goes right within the family, not just broken home, but dysfunctional homes too. But if everything goes right within the family, there's a high chance that everything will go right everywhere else. All right. So let's talk about the forces of marriage destruction. So there are powers called the powers of marriage destruction. And sometimes, you know, their work, the work of, of the powers of marriage destruction, it starts from the womb. It does not only start when somebody gets married. And um, once they discover that a person marriage will move God's purpose forward, what they do, they, begun to, they begin to create problems in that person's life. And so there are specific powers delegated to pull marriage down. So these are the forces of marriage destruction. There are specific powers delegated to pull marriage down. And you will see that happening in a lot of family, even right now as we're speaking, people are experiencing the forces of marriage destruction. All right? And, um, you know, the, the, these same um, powers called marriage destruction, you know, you may see them, you know, happening even in life of um, people in certain family, you see a pattern of how marriages go, how things go, you know, some people, they have to have all their children with multiple people outside before they finally find a husband. 
Those are forces of marriage destruction. Some people, their destiny is tied with their marriage. And so they will end up wrong in the wrong situation, wrong situation. And before they realize it's too late. So those are forces of marriage destruction. Those are some examples. There's um, so many examples that we can give. All right. So there, these are these specific powers, as we said, they are delegated to pull marriages down. And um, we see even in the world, there are people, even people in the demonic kingdom, holding fasting, you know, against marriages. You know, I don't know if you hear about a situation that happened in South Africa where some witches were gathered and fasted for 201 days. You hear me? 201 days against Christian marriages. And so why do you think they do that? They do that because they see that when the marriages are together and um, things are going the right way as God has ordained it to be, there will be less problem. There will be, it will be impossible for them to carry out their activities. All right? So many marriages um, are bewitched and sometimes affected persons may carry the bewitchment everywhere they go. They carry it to church, they carry it to work everywhere they go, and it's very obvious. And so once you see, for example, um, you know, this pattern happening in families, it is very clear that the bewitchment has already started and a lot of prayer is needed. All right, so unfortunately, many people do not attach importance to the issue of marriage. And in fact, some people only see their marriage important when the problems start. They start to blame it on the strange woman. They want to pray and say, let the strange woman die. You know, when we say die here on our platform, we don't mean people should physically die. You, you deal with the powers and the spirit that is behind the person, not the individual. All right. You know, we can kill people. It's only God can do that. God has the right to take, give and to take. We can't do that. We don't have that capacity. So when we say die, it doesn't mean that, oh, I'm going to let the strange woman physically pass away. No, that's not what it means. When you say somebody die, when you say something die, you mean stop, be eradicated, put, um, somersault, be silenced. Refuse to um, exist. Those are the things that you mean. And there's also a video on the channel that say, um, talks about what do we mean when we use the word die and things like those. So take a look at that and it will give you some more insights. All right. So as we said, a lot of people do not attach importance to the issue of marriage. And um, as a result, some people, they will rush into any kind of marriage. Some people just want to say that they're married. So they will marry anybody and anyone. They don't even take the time out to pray to see if this person is the right person for them. All right, so it is a tragedy and it's unfortunate because even in the situation of these, like cases like these, you have people that have lost their lives. People have end up in situation of extreme abuse and many other tragedies just because they rush into any kind of marriage just to say that they're married. All right, and to be honest with you, the truth is that some of these people would have been alive, some of them would have been better off if they had never run into this situation. All right. So if you ask me, some of these situations turn out to be their graveyards. So their marriage become their graveyards to them. And it's sad to know that many people, they don't really care about the type of marriage they get involved in. Um, they don't care of the circumstances they get in. They don't care to check nothing. It's only, like I said, when the problems start to kick in, that's when they start to show that they care. And some people even know what they're getting into, but still don't care. All right? So a person's life um, never remains the same after marriage. We know that when you're getting married, when you're getting married, the wedding is just for a day. Some cultures may have three different weddings, a week of wedding, whatever it is. But once that wedding is over, it's done. But so, you know, in our society that we live in, in the Western world here, a marriage is technically for a day. So that, I mean, a wedding is technically for a day. So when you have that wedding over, guess what happened? The marriage. And the marriage is supposed to be for a life. All right? So you can have the most flamboyant wedding. You can do all of those nice cultural things. But really and truly, that is just for the moment. But the reality is the marriage that is supposed to be for a life. And so many marriages have broken up due to seemingly light issues, but it's unfortunate because a lot of the times it's the work of bewitchment. Okay, so some people, 
going to this wedlock or marriage or wedding, and then it becomes like a padlock. So we can talk about this issue on wedlock or padlock. So many people will help, you know, to organize your wedding, but marriage is really between two people. So the marriage is between the husband and, and the wife and also God. So God is always the common denominator in your marriage. But in reality, your marriage is between you, your husband, you and your husband, husband and a wife. God is the mediator. Your marriage is really between you and your husband. Okay. So the next horrible thing after hellfire is really a bad marriage. And, and I check people that is having, having marital issues. What is the most horrible thing that they have ever encountered in their life? And they will tell you that they're a troubled marriage. So after going to hell, as most as believers, we believe in heaven and hell. So as a Christian, you don't want to go to hell, you know, because hell is the place of torture and doom and agony and pain, everlasting pain. So that is the most horrible thing that exists in the life of a Christian hell. Nobody wants to go to hell. So after hell, the next thing that is worse is really a bad marriage. Because if you go into a bad marriage, I'm telling you, that is a determinant of so many other problems in your life. All right? So marriage is an institution created by God, as we said. And marriage can make or mar your life in no small measure. But a good and godly marriage is a bedrock of correct living and success. I don't know if you ever see some people with a, good marriage and marriage is successful and everything. And all of a sudden you just see their life start to progress. Some people, by the time they're married, you start to see their life start to flourish. And that's a, a, a good example of what a good and successful marriage can yield. All right. So there's no difference between wedlock and padlock. Wedlock is padlock. Those concerned are padlocked. All right. Marriage is either a holy wedlock or an unholy padlock. That's really what it is. You know, so, you know, when we get married, you know, in a civilized world, we use a wedding ring. Some people don't. But that wedding ring that many people desire so much, to be honest, it is the smallest handcuff in history. You know, if you get arrested by the police, they put cuffs on both hands. But when you get married, you put a little ring, a tiny little ring on your finger like this. And so that ring sometimes become a handcuff. The truth is that it is better to be laughed at, you know, that you're not married than for you to be unable to laugh because you're married. And that's when it becomes a handcuff. You can't laugh. You get all this beating, all this pushing, all this pulling because you have a ring on your finger. That's literally prison. Some people are married and they're literally in prison. Okay. So anyone who enters into a marriage relationship because the woman, for example, is beautiful or because the man is handsome. It's like a man who pretty much bought a house because of the paint. Or you buy a car because it's in fashion or a suit of clothes because that's what's trending. So if a child of God marries a child of the devil, you know, or Satan, well, guess what? Satan is your father-in-law. If you are a child of God and you marry somebody that is a child of the devil, get it in your head. Satan is your father-in-law. And think about it. If you marry a man outside and that man has a father what does that man father become to you your father-in-law so if you're a child of god and you marry the child of the devil satan is your father-in-law and there's no filter about that and so if satan is your father-in-law guess what happened he will trouble your life if satan is your father-in-law he will be active in your life so as children of God, you have to make sure that when you're getting married, you don't marry Satan relatives. You don't marry his sons or his daughters because he will become your father-in-law. Amen? So when a marriage is wrong, the children from such a marriage are in bondage. And if marriages work in our society, a lot of things will start going on very well. So a lot of marriages have been caged by the enemy. That is, you know, pretty much why you see, for example... Even pastors beating up their wives. You know, people that call themselves Christians and prayer warriors beating their wives, battering their children. So many sad cases happening in, the, in, in, in those marriages because the marriages have been caged. 
All right. So the enemy knows that once he causes this unity in a home, the family will not move forward. Also, the devil has, has a way of bringing problems when, you know, for example, when these marriage couples, they're at edge, where they, when they're at the edge of their breakthroughs and they start finding, or, um, they start to fight and, you know, miss their breakthroughs. So the devil knows how to do that very, very well. All right. So let's look at when, what kind of marriages need deliverance. So we'll just discuss a few of them. What kind of marriage that needs deliverance? I do pray that people are listening you know, and really taking these things very serious. This is really critical information that we need to know as married people. All right. So what kind of marriage need deliverance? First, so marriages where communication has broken down. All right. So if you see, for example, um, you're in a marriage and your communication has broken down, you know, there is a big issue because why? When communication breaks down, it is a sign that bewitchment has set in. It is a sign that deliverance is needed. And it means that the enemy has become the third party in the marriage. And to be honest with you, if your father-in-law is Satan because you married a child of the devil, then he's going to definitely be the mediator in that situation when you have um, a breakdown in communication. So it's very important to pray and ask the Lord to deliver your marriage. All right, so the second one is that marriages where in-laws have taken over. So these are the examples of what kind of marriage needs deliverance. So first we said where the communication has broken down. Second is where the in-laws has taken over. And people can recount so many experiences or examples of what marriages turn out to be when in-laws has taken over. And once your in-law has taken over that marriage, deliverance is surely needed. Okay, and that marriage that need deliverance is marriage that is retained by money. Okay, so these people, they will stay together as long as there's money and immediately there's no money. Guess what? Marriage broke down. All right, another marriage that needs deliverance is regretted marriages. So these are situations where partners do not have time for one another. They go into a situation for obvious reasons and they regret it. They live in the situation where they really regret even marrying the person. And there's lots of examples that we could list on regretted marriage. There's so many you can even think about. All right. So marriages that need deliverance. Where marriages where both parties are actors and actresses. When we say actors and actresses, it means that these people they pretend as if everything's all right, but within there is like fighting, cursing, quarreling. You know, they dominate the relationship. They're, you know, some of them are. They're basically they're actors, acting husband, acting wives. In front of the public, you said, oh my God, what a beautiful marriage. But behind closed doors, is hell on earth. And um, that's just unfortunate, unfortunate, very, very unfortunate. Amen? So um, also, a marriage where you see needs, um, need, need deliverance is when the marriage um, has entered into a third-party cage. When the marriage is entered into a third party cage. And so this is um, the home that is controlled by a third party. It could be the husband friends. It could be the in-laws. It could be anything. There's, there's so many examples that people has reach out and say, my marriage is in shamble. Why? Because it's my husband friend or my wife's friend or my wife co-worker or whatever the situation is. There are lots of instances like that. Amen. So those are very, very important things to know when a marriage needs deliverance, when third party has entered into and caged that marriage. I actually um, had somebody reach out to me and the person was like very distressed. And, the, you know, the person was telling me that this person is saying that this is what the spouse is doing with a coworker and everything. And I was reading the message and I'm like, how come this person cannot see that this person is really trying to destroy the marriage. A third party has come in showing at this person all the things that the spouse is doing. And then at the same time, it, it seems as if this third party is trying to help the situation to that person. But the reality is that that person is really trying to destroy that marriage. So I, I couldn't, me if you know me very well, I don't know how to go around the corner. I speak the truth. I told the person, I said, maybe you should really stop taking news about your your spouse and that will solve the problem all right so please don't allow third parties 
into your marriage, it is a big, big mistake. All right? So marriages um, that need deliverance. I'll give you a few more. Shallow marriages. So there is um, a lot of shallow, shallow marriages out there. And this is where there is no true love. The people involved, they just got married for some purposes. People get married nowadays for any reason. All right? Marriages that need deliverance. Marriages where there is an abusive husband and a stubborn wife. Don't forget, there's also abusive wives and stubborn um, husbands as well. It's not just abusive husband. There are abusive wives out there as well. All right? Marriages where both parties are committing adultery is another marriage that need deliverance. Marriages where both parties are committing adultery are not just both party, but even one party. Marriages where there's any form of adultery needs deliverance. And so the only way a person can be free from this is to remain on fire always. If you find that you're looking at another man when you're a married woman, you need to really go and examine yourself and build, build up yourself in Christ and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. If your husband is like that and he's not strong in his walk, you need to intercede for him, okay? And pray that the Lord will arrest him. Pray that the Lord will deliver him and pray also that he will turn from his ways. And for those that are wondering, there is a prayer on the YouTube channel, praying for your husband's salvation and deliverance. You can interchange it, praying for your wife, salvation and deliverance. You can even pray for your family members. Just change where I have husband up to wife if you're a man. And you can put family instead of husband and wife if that's what you need. But that prayer is very effective. I've had lots of testimonies from people from that prayer. So please check it out on the YouTube channel. Amen. All right. So marriages that needs deliverance is troubled marriages. So these are situations where you have sicknesses, satanic attacks, surgical operations, problem with children, lack of peace, illicit marriage that is always defined by troubles. So those are marriages that need deliverance. Okay. So marriages that need deliverance is marriages where couples beat, fight each other, fight each other. You know, marriages where you have baby husbands. I call them baby husbands. You know, in our church, we call them baby husbands too. So marriages where baby husbands beat their wives and baby wives beat their husbands. There are women out there that beats their husband. I'm telling you. I, I am very, very confident. I know people that beat their husband. So please don't be beating your husband and don't be beating your wife's husband. It, you know, you didn't marry to beat each other. You know, if you're beating your husband as a wife, you're a baby wife. And if you're beating your husband, if you're beating your wife as a husband, you're a baby husband, you know? So that is not godly. It is wrong. Please don't do that. Figure out a way to work out your situation. Pray to your situation. If, it's, if you can't find that you can't deal with it through prayers, Get a counselor involved, get a professional counselor involved, get your pastor involved so that they can advise you and help you navigate through the situation. It will get better if you work on it. All right. So marriages that needs deliverance, you have polygamous marriages. And so anyone who is a product of polygamy needs to go for deliverance. All polygamous marriages need restitution and deliverance. Marriages that need deliverance. So marriages with the foundation of sex before marriage. So if you find yourself in that situation, your marriage need deliverance. If you find that you, you have sex with um, each other before you were joining marriage, a marriage will suffer attacks from the enemy because they have offended God. And the Bible says that marriage is honorable and the bed must remain undefiled. But God will judge what? The adulterers and adulteresses. So once you build your, the, the foundation of your marriage on sex before marriage, you will certainly have trouble. So please ensure to go and pray and ask God to deliver you from the spirit of fornication. Renounce it over your marriage. And we trust God that God will make your marriage beautiful again. Amen. So marriages that um, need deliverance is marriages to satanic agents. And we basically discuss that if you marry. A child of the devil, the devil is your father-in-law. You're married to satanic agents, you will not have a happy marriage as a Christian. If you're a satanic agent and you marry a satanic agent, maybe that's better because the two of you are equally yoked. But if you're a child of God, you shouldn't be marrying to satanic agents. So it's very clear that, um, very right and clear that you actually take the time out and pray very well before you get yourself into marriage and also into some type of family because one of the next thing too, to marry into a family that is 
very wicked and deep into witchcraft. That is also a marriage out to satanic agents because we have to face it. When you marry a man, you marry the family too. You can't exclude the man as a woman or even the wife as a man. You can't exclude them and say, I'm only married to this person. I don't want to deal with their family. No, the person didn't drop from the sky. So therefore you have to have interaction with your family. So very important to pray. Okay, so we're going to be quick with this and get into prayers. So marriages that need deliverance is marriages with the foundation of accidental pregnancy. So this is when people rush into marriage due to pregnancy. This is very prob problematic because you can't just jump and marry somebody because you get pregnant for them. You marry them because that is, a, that is your divine spouse. You don't marry somebody because, oh, we go fornicate and get pregnant. Big avenue for problems. Okay. So marriage that need deliverance, marriages as a result of demonic consultation. So some people may go to a psychic or some false prophet or wherever, and they say, oh yeah, this person is your husband. Go ahead, marry. And then next thing you know, you made the biggest mistake of your life. So don't do that. Allow the, allow the Holy Spirit to direct you, not man, not prophet, nobody. Allow the Holy Spirit to direct you when it comes on to your marriage. Okay. So marriages that need deliverance, you have forced marriages. The forced marriages are marriages where couples were forced into the relationship, either by parents or others. And unfortunately, even some pastors force on their members and each other, tell them because they think that they will be a good couple for each other. So don't let nobody force you into any marriage. All right. Marriages that need deliverance. You have child marriages. So are these children marriage or child marriages? These are situations where children... You know, it, it could be even like even age six, five, eight, 12. There's cultures that do that. The children are given out in marriage. Um, some of those marriages need, they, I mean, all of them need marriage, needs deliverance. Because how do you marry somebody in that age? Somebody that is not able to make a proper decision or consent for a marriage. Those definitely child, children marriages need deliverance. All right. Marriage that needs deliverance. Marriage based on tribal sentiments. That said it clearly. Marriages that need deliverance is marriages as a result of demonic prophecies. We did talk about that briefly. Marriages that need deliverance is marriages with the foundation of trial and error. So basically, they entered into these marriages into, you know, probably maybe some form of, you know, maybe they say, let me test it and see if it will work out. So those are, like, it's kind of like you're sampling. Those are actually bad foundation for marriage. Okay, so marriages that need deliverance, marriages that is formed under blood covenant. So some people form blood covenant, they cut each other and say, let's connect our blood together, we'll never leave you for the rest of our life. Some people do it in the form of tattoos, all those things, anything that has to do with blood covenant. Those are bad foundations for marriages and they definitely need deliverance. A few more before we wrap up. So marriages that need deliverance is marriages in which the bride's um, legs were washed with water on the wedding day. So the, you see that happen in various parts of the world that they wash, you know, their legs and even their hair on their wedding day. So you definitely know that is the operation of marrying spirits. That marrying spirit will come and trouble that marriage. All right. So marriages that needs deliverance is marriages in which a, an animal was attached to any of the parties. So there are some cultures, you know, that, in order to marry the person, you have to bring a four-legged animal. It could be a goat or a cow, you know, or something like that to go. It, it, like the man have to bring it when they're marrying the woman. And that is um, an unfortunate situation because that is a marriage that needs serious deliverance. And some of them, um, they will even ask, like some of the couples when they're getting married, to take like maybe from the village, they will take like a girl or a boy from the village. And next thing you know, that person most of the time is 99% of the time is a witch and that person frustrates that marriage. All right. So marriages that need deliverance, all marriages that is done in a crude traditional way needs deliverance. So, um, maybe some people, um, don't have the experience of a traditional marriage. Like from my culture, we don't have traditional marriage. We just do the standard marriage as what they do in the church. But there are some culture that do some crude tra traditional things for marriage, you know, like they would even offer some type of, um, libation and, you know, sacrifices and stuff prior for the marriage. So these marriages definitely need marriage, um, deliverance. You know, some of them will offer alcohol. 
some of them will offer like some in some culture they will offer like alligator pepper cola nuts some different stuff so definitely those are demonic and it needs deliverance okay so marriages that needs deliverance a few more and we are over marriages which in which the bride was stolen all right so when we talk about the bride being stolen you know there are some people that steal people's husband like for example i know a case of a woman that stole somebody's husband and she literally went and married her husband while the man was even married to the wife so that's a marriage that is told that marriage will never it will never last you know and on top of that you know there's some culture where they have certain things like some culture pay dowry you know and some people don't fulfill those things um some culture don't if your culture don't observe it that's fine but even in the bible the dowry is there so therefore if your culture um, endorsed that, absolutely, you should pay your dowry. So you don't want to just take somebody and move them in and say, you know, this is your marriage. The truth is that that person was stolen or your bride was stolen, your husband was stolen, and you need to make the right correction and restitution. If you steal somebody's husband, give back the wife the husband. And um, if you steal somebody's wife, give it back to the husband. And also... Um, if you've done marriage in such a way, like, for example, you didn't pay your bride price or whatever the situation is, things that are justifiable, go to your church and do your correction marriage and do the deliverance and may the Lord bless your marriage. But for those that have stolen people, husbands and people, wife, return them. Okay. So marriages that needs deliverance is marriages for the purpose of obtaining documents. And in this side of the world, you will see it a lot. There are a lot of marriages of convenience. I can tell you countless stories of what I know of marriage of convenience. So those are marriages that is not built on the right foundation. Most of the time they will not last because as once those person get that document, that's the end of the marriage. So be very careful. Okay. So marriages that needs deliverance is marriages where couples that have the problem of spirit husband, spirit wife. So if you need have spirit husband or spirit wife, you need deliverance. Those marriages need deliverance. Marriages that need deliverance. Marriages where husbands sleep with his in-laws. I, I can give you a millions of story of what I heard, read, or seen with this situation where husband and even wives sleeps with their in-laws. All right? So marriages that need deliverance. Marriages where the couple secretly carry out abortions. People carry abortions out for various reasons, maybe because of the sex of the child. They didn't want a girl. They want a boy instead or so many different things all right so those marriages definitely need deliverance and you know um when you start to sacrifice children like that you know that you're given to the god of molech and so great deliverance is needed okay so marriages that needs deliverance is marriages where both families never agree and the couples are not born again so if your families are not getting along and you are also not born again unfortunately your marriage needs deliverance Okay, so that's it for that where we're talking in terms of the types of marriage that needs deliverance. I want to encourage you that the enemy has really worked hard in the era of marriage in the lives of human lives and um, is still doing so. And so the enemy knows that marriage goes beyond the two people involved. Um, it concerns generations. It concerns family trees on both sides. And the enemy struggles very hard to ensure that marriages are built on the wrong foundation so that he can do his work of destruction very well. All right? So the, there are demonic influences fighting against marriages. And, you know, to be honest with you, they try very hard to work on tearing down Christian marriages in particular. And so it's very important for you as Christians to know that a family that prays together stays together. And when I say a family that prays together, I don't mean you pray only when you have birthday or Thanksgiving or Christmas all the time. You know, you're supposed to start that in your family. The moment you get married, you do prayers with your husband, morning devotion, devotion before you go to bed. Always do your family prayer, grow your children in the fear of the Lord. Do um, your devotion with them morning and evening in the daytime if they're not at school take up your bible read a text to them even if it's just one verse of the bible and ask them what do they think it means do a little discussion don't make it be long and overdrawn to the point that they say they can't handle it do it with them and even if it's just 10 or 15 minutes and let them have something to think about 
All right. So I just want you to know also God is very angry with Christian couples or Christian families that don't pray together because family that do not pray together, they're looking for problem. And when you get into problem, you, you, you expect to run back to God and say, fix it and still you continue with the same lifestyle. All right, so Jeremiah 10 verse 25 says, pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not and upon the families that call, that call not thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob and devoured him and consumed him and have made his habitation desolate. Amen? So many dangers are done right at night. They're done at nights, for example. And the Bible said, we know it clearly that while man slept, the enemy came in and sore tears among the wheat. So dangers come when husband and wife go to sleep without clearing their disagreements. If they don't settle their disagreement before they come to bed at night, there will be a third party on that bed. And guess who's that third party? The devil. All right. So some husbands, they're possessed and some wives too, they're possessed. And there are some people whose natural body would like to preserve the marriage, but the spirit within them will be seeking to destroy it. And so that is problem. And so the, tr the truth is that if you don't go for deliverance, there will be problem. <clears throat> Sorry, amen? So um, we have to pray for our marriage. We have to trust God to work things out in our marriage. We need to look into ourselves. Stop speaking negative over your marriage because negativity will destroy your marriage. Stop quarreling in your marriage instead of go and read your Bible and pray and figure out how to work out your issues without allowing the enemy to come through those gates to frustrate your marriage. All right? And so with that said, we're just going to get to the final part before we start praying. Um, how to deliver your marriage. So how to deliver your marriage. What should you do to avoid these attacks? So number one, the first thing you got to do is to be born again. Get born again. The first thing is new birth. So if you got married as, as unbelievers or your partner is not born again, you need to pray for a new birth. Get born again. You need to completely repent. So we talk about all the different things when your marriage needs deliverance. Plus you always have, everybody have their own unique story. You know what is right from wrong. Go and do your repentance. Go to the Lord. You don't have to repent to nobody. It's God that you repent to. All right. You must seek God's face for the right partner. That is, if you're not married as yet, seek God's face for the right partner. If you're already married, well, it's unfortunately, it's if once you don't steal somebody, husband or their wife, it's not too late. You can really pray for a foundational deliverance for your marriage. You can do some foundational deliverance prayers for your marriage. And if you discover that marriage do not work in your family, don't deceive yourself by thinking that those forces will not attack your own marriage. You need to pray. Prayer is greatly needed. All right. What you need to do also, you need to cultivate the garden of your heart daily and you need to pray about it daily. Constantly pray for your partner, constantly pray for your marriage, constantly pray for your children. You know, deal with those foundational powers and trust God to work things out for you and fight your battle for you. All right. The last thing is that you must have a family altar. You know, it's very, very critical. Some people, they're praying and asking God to destroy the strange woman, destroy the third party in my marriage. But the truth is that all God wants from them is a family altar. You need to really make sure that your family altar is on fire for the Lord. Amen. So with that said, um, I'll just give you a minute to just go before the Lord and just repent. We're going to do some prayers of, um, you know, for, for, for your marriage. But I'll just give you an opportunity. After giving you all this knowledge, I believe it's very, very fair for me to um, give you a chance to repent before we actually get into these prayers. So let's come before the Lord right now and just begin to ask him for mercy. If there's anything that you have done to put your marriage in the situation that is in, ask the Lord for mercy. If you have stolen somebody's husband or if you have stolen somebody's wife, this is the opportunity to ask the Lord for mercy. I know that it's hard because maybe you get yourself tied up in that situation, but reach out to that wife that you have stole their husband and to that husband that you have stolen their wife, ask them for forgiveness and give them back their husband and wife. I know it's not easy. I know people will be looking at you and saying, oh my God, how could you do that? How could you give back the person? Do the right thing. Return it. There are so many women that are crying out to God day and night for restoration of their marriages 
and um, the husband is not coming back because some woman has caged their husband or some man has caged the wife of a husband wife. So um, if you're in that situation, um, I'm not going to deceive you and tell you that it's okay. I don't endorse those things. I don't support those things. It's a part. It's not a part of my belief system. You know, I follow the Bible in its full extent. There's nothing in the Bible that justifies somebody stealing somebody's wife so or somebody's husband. So do the right thing. Bring, return them. Return them. Uh, um, if the person, if the wife don't want back that husband or the husband don't want back that wife, you know, you guys have to figure how to work that out. I'm not a marriage counselor. I'm not, I'm, I don't know the situation, the unique situation as to how to advise you. But if a husband is looking back for your wife, and you stole that wife, give back the wife to the husband. If a, a, if a wife is crying out to God for their husband that you have stolen, give back that um, husband to that wife. Because if you don't, the prayers of that person will be on you. Um, just recently I have a lady that reached out to me and the lady told me that, you know, she was in a very bad situation in her marriage and she said she couldn't do it anymore. She had to divorce her husband because her safety was critical at the time. And she said that when she did that, I, you know, the separation gave her some time to think and also the husband as well. And the husband was seeing somebody else. And she said, she realized that, oh my God, I, I, I just gave up my marriage. She said she want back her husband. And she started to pray for her marriage. She started to pray. She said she was doing the prayer on the channel, terminating the strange woman. She said that the woman was with her husband. And she said also that the, the woman started to have dream. And the woman tell her that, oh my God, your wife is like a witch. She's attacking me. I'm laying in the bed sleeping and I hear a voice like thunder telling me to get out. So those are the things that will happen to you when you're stealing people's husband. So the prayer of that woman, it touched the heart of God to the point that the strange woman got scared for her own life. She ran away from her husband. To the glory of God, they spent Christmas together and God is healing their marriage and restoring it. And they're getting the right help so that they can remarry and have back their home. So we thank God for that. And I can tell you countless stories of those rec um, rest re re restoration, a restorative marriage, you know, that people shared with me on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, so take the opportunity and ask the Lord for mercy. Cry out to him. He's a great God that's worthy to be praised. He's excellent. Father, let your kingdom come and it will be done over these marriages. Father, deliver these marriages by your mercy, O God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you, O God, for healing in these homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Help your people to do what's right by your, by your name in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you because you are faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So we're going to start praying these prayers right now. If you have an email or a concern, prayer request or anything, feel free to send me an email. Go to the website, www.ogodarightsministries.com. Go to the contact section right there. You can send me your prayer request, testimonies, praise report, whatever. Just send it through the contact section and um, we'll take it from there. Okay. Also, don't forget, if you want to support the ministry, go to our ministry website, www.ogodarizeministries.com. All the ways to give is right there on the ministry website. You can give right through the website, through Cash App, through Zelle, um, all e-transfer, all those ways is there. You can also partner with the ministry. You can do that as well. You can also go right here on the YouTube channel. You can give through Super Sticker, Super Chat, Super Tanks, being a member of the YouTube channel. You can give on TikTok as well. And um, as you do that, we'll, the law will bless you. And um, since this is the beginning of the year, um, I would encourage you to sow a seed into the ministry over your prayers, over what you're trusting God for in the new year. And ju just use your seed to provoke God into action, to answer your prayers to the glory of his name. And just keep in mind that money doesn't answer your prayer. I don't want you to think that's what I meant. Giving money won't answer your prayer. What answer your prayer is a heart that is humble before the Lord, a heart that is genuine before the Lord, a heart that is forgiven, you know, the heart that doesn't carry bitterness and heaviness. But those things are some of the things that, you know, will allow God to really hear your cry. Um, giving your offering, yes, the Bible talks about giving, but what it does, it really provoke God. You're, it's, it's an act of faith to provoke God, to say, God, this is my offering. Just like the widow that give with his might, with her might. That's, that's really what the giving does. 
Um, so please, I don't want you to think that I'm here saying that give offering so that your prayer will be answered because if you give offering and your prayers is not answered, I don't want to hold that responsibility because that's not scriptural. All right. But given, as we said, it's an act of faith to provoke God's into action. And we trust that God, as you give, God will work it out for you. Amen. So we're going to cry out this one loud and clear to the glory of God. Every strong man of marriage destruction. Die in the name of Jesus. Every strong man of marriage destruction. Die in the name of Jesus. Every strong man of marriage destruction. Die in the name of Jesus. Every strong man of marriage destruction. Die in the name of Jesus. Every strong man of marriage destruction. Die in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every problem introduced into my life by marriage of my parents. Die in the name of Jesus. Every problem introduced into my life by the marriage of my parents. Die in the name of Jesus. Every problem introduced into my life by the marriage of my parents. Die in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every ancestral spirit husband, if you're a man, spirit wife, if you're a woman, spirit husband, and if you have both spirit husband and spirit wife, because there's cases like that, say both of them. Every ancestral spirit husband, your time is up. Die in the name of Jesus. Every ancestral spirit husband, your time is up. Die in the name of Jesus. Every ancestral spirit husband, your time is up. Die in the name of Jesus. Every ancestral spirit husband, your time is up. Die in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every witchcraft power of my father's house, release my marriage. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft power of my father's house, release my marriage. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft power of my father's house, release my marriage. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft power of my father's house, release my marriage. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft power of my father's house, release my marriage. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft power of my father's house, release my marriage. In the name of Jesus, every witchcraft power of my father's house, release my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every owner of evil Lord in my marriage. Carry a load in the name of Jesus. Every owner of evil load in my marriage. Carry a load in the name of Jesus. Every owner of evil load in my marriage. Carry a load in the name of Jesus. Every owner of evil load in my marriage. Carry a load in the name of Jesus. Every owner of evil load in my marriage. Carry a load in Jesus' name we pray. Man, so somebody needs to pray this prayer very loud and clear. Within seven days, every power pursuing my peace shall die in the name of Jesus. Within seven days, every power pursuing my peace shall be buried in the name of Jesus. Within seven days, every power pursuing my peace shall be buried in the name of Jesus. Within seven days, every power pursuing my peace shall be buried in the name of Jesus. Within seven days, Every power pursuing my peace shall be buried in the name of Jesus within seven days. Every power pursuing my peace shall be buried in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So those that are on TikTok, I, I really can't accept your request because I'm streaming live on YouTube. If you have a um, one, if you want me to follow up with you or you have a prayer request, please go to the ministry website, www ministries.com go to the contact section and right there we can follow up with you all right so just please enjoy the prayers and pray along with us to the glory of god
Let's cry out this one loud and clear. Oh God, arise and advertise your power in my life. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and advertise your power in my life. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and advertise your power in my life. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and advertise your power in my life. In Jesus' name we're praying. Amen. Every evil tree growing in my family line. Die in the name of Jesus. Every evil tree growing in my family line. Die in the name of Jesus. Every evil tree growing in my family line. Die in the name of Jesus. Every evil tree growing in my family line. Die in the name of Jesus. Every evil tree growing in my family life. Die. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I receive victory over the host of wickedness surrounding my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I receive victory over the host of wickedness surrounding my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I receive victory over the host of wickedness surrounding my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I receive victory over the host of wickedness surrounding my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let all the troublers of my marriage be disbanded and be confused. In the name of Jesus, let all the troublers of my marriage be disbanded and be confused. In the name of Jesus, let all the troublers of my marriage be disbanded and be confused. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, let all the troublers of my marriage be disbanded and be confused. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let all the troublers of my marriage be disbanded and be confused. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Every satanic storm in my marriage. Be silenced. In the name of Jesus, every satanic storm in my marriage, be silenced. In the name of Jesus, every satanic storm in my marriage, be silenced. In the name of Jesus, every satanic storm in my marriage, be silenced. In the name of Jesus, every satanic storm in my marriage, be silenced. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I prophesy life to every dead blessing in my marriage, my life, and the life of my husband. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy life to every dead blessing in my marriage, my life, and the life of my husband. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy life to every dead blessing in my marriage, my life, and the life of my husband. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I paralyze all marriage destroyers and anti-marriage forces. In the name of Jesus, I paralyze all marriage destroyers and anti-marriage forces. In the name of Jesus, I paralyze all marriage destroyers and anti-marriage forces. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the spirit of frustration in my home be frustrated. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of frustration in my home be frustrated. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of frustration in my home be frustrated. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In the name of Jesus, I break the bondage of marital failure and rejection. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. I bind the spirit of fear and intimidation. Troubling my life and my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of fear and intimidation. Troubling my life and my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I bind the spirit of fear and intimidation. Troubling my life and my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh God, arise and deliver my marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and deliver my marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and deliver my marriage. In the name of Jesus, oh God, arise and deliver my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father Lord, let the purpose of the enemy for my life and my marriage begin to happen in their own life in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, my Father, let the purpose of the enemy for my life and my marriage begin to happen in their own life and their own marriage in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, let the purpose of the enemy for my life and my marriage begin to happen in their own life and their marriages. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I cut my marriage off from every territorial and tribal spirit. In the name of Jesus, I cut my marriage off from every territorial and tribal spirit. In the name of Jesus, I cut my marriage off from every territorial and tribal spirit. In the name of Jesus, I cut my marriage off from every territorial and tribal spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So some people really need to cry out this one with all their heart right now. I cancel every evil prophecy against my marriage. So you know there are some people out there. They will speak so much evil about your marriage. They declare your marriage that it will not work even before you get into it. They speak negativity about your marriage. They laugh about your marriage. They're literally prophesying evil against your marriage. So you need to cancel those evil prophecy. And sometimes you need to send them back to your sender. Sometimes you routinely need to stand up and say, anyone wishing evil for my marriage, let it go back to them. Expose God and disgrace them. Some of you have unfriendly friends in your marriage that is advising you, serving as counselors. And literally what they're doing is prophesying destruction over your marriage. So I want you to open up your mouth and cry this one out loud and clear. I cancel every evil prophecy against my marriage in the name of jesus i cancel every evil prophecy against my marriage in the name of jesus i cancel every evil prophecy against my marriage in jesus name we pray amen so we're gonna pray this one now i cancel every evil vow that is negatively affecting my marriage in the name of Jesus, I cancel every evil vow that is affecting my marriage negatively. In the name of Jesus, I cancel every evil vow that is affecting my marriage negatively. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I break every spell of anti-marriage curses upon me and my husband. In the name of Jesus, I break every spell of anti-marriage curses upon me and my husband. In the name of Jesus, I break every spell of anti-marriage curses upon me and my husband. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I command every tongue issuing destruction against my marriage to be condemned. In the name of Jesus, I command every tongue issuing destruction against my marriage to be condemned. In the name of Jesus, I command every tongue issuing destruction against me and my marriage to be condemned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My Father, put your divine laughter into my life and my marriage this month. 
In the name of Jesus, my father, put divine laughter into my marriage and my life this month. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, my father, put divine laughter into my marriage and my life this year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father Lord, let your kingdom be established in every department of my marriage. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, let your kingdom be established in every department of my marriage. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord, let your kingdom be established in every department of my marriage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I wish we could continue, but this is it for the day. Let's just take the opportunity. Let's just begin to thank the Lord. For he's a faithful God. He's just, he's a deliverer. He will deliver your life. He will deliver your home. He will deliver your marriage. Let's just magnify the name of the Lord because he's worthy to be praised. Father, we just want to thank you because you are a faithful God. Father, let your name be exalted. Let your name be lifted up. Let your name be magnified in the name of Jesus. Thank you for laying your hand of power upon us, O God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, O God, as, as we have spoken and prayed about a marriage that needs deliverance. Father, by your mercy, deliver our marriages in the name of Jesus. Father, help your children to do what is right concerning their marriage. Father, help them to make the restitution where necessary, Lord. And Lord, I pray that as they do so, you will deliver their marriages. You will restore them, O God, and you will bring joy to their homes in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, we thank you for everyone that has gathered here now and those that will come and re-listen this program in the future. Father, by your mercy, hear their cry and answer their prayers. Father, take all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We worship you, God. Father, we commit every marriage and commit my marriage into your hands in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for delivering our homes. Thank you for delivering our marriages and our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so that's it for the word of God today and also our um, prayers that we prayed. When your marriage needs deliverance, please take the opportunity to go back, re-listen this program, pray the prayers. There are also lots more prayers on the channel that deals with marriages, so take the opportunity to go ahead and also look at those two. We pray that the Lord will bless you as you do that. All right, so our confession that we're doing for this week, our fourth, from the 1st of January to the 7th, is Psalms chapter 24. And Psalms chapter 24 says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he had founded it upon the seas and established it upon the flood. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lift up, lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O he gates, and be he lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O he gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Amen. So that's our confession for the first seven days of January. We pray that the Lord will do great things in your life, in your marriages, in your home. I pray also you have a successful year, 2024. For those that haven't, take the chance to look at it. The prophetic picture of the year 2024 is available on the YouTube channel. It's also available on TikTok as well. You can go and listen it and take note. And um, you know that this year is a year of supernatural advancement and open doors. And so you want to kind of hear what God is saying about the year so that you can prepare yourself so that you will partake in the blessings of 2024. All right. So I pray that the Lord face will shine upon you. I pray that it will be gracious unto you. I cover you, your marriage, your families. I cover my marriage, your family. I cover this ministry in the blood of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will fight for us and we shall hold our peace. Father, thank you for manifesting your power in our lives. Thank you for showing us that you are God. Thank you for you are mighty and excellent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So don't forget that um, we will be meeting a couple of days in the, from now to the 7th outside of our morning prayers um, here on YouTube. Um, the, it will not be announced. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you will not miss it. And we trust God that we will pray some 
ocean dividing prayers, as we have said, um, till from now to the 7th of um, January. And we trust God as we kick off with some strong prayers so that to start the first week of the new year, that God will also do great and mighty things in our lives. Amen. So God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you very